Hello and welcome to NIH's Extramural Nexus Television. I am David Kossub. I'm part of the NIH's Office of Extramural Research uh, Communications Shop. And I am glad to say that we're going to be having our 2023 year in review with uh, our fearless leader, Dr. Michael Lauer. Uh, he serves as the NIH um, Deputy Director for Extramural Research, also the head of the Office of Extramural Research. And uh, he's going to tell us all about his thoughts on how we did last year and what's coming up for 2024. So, Mike, um, welcome. Hi, David. Well, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to wish everybody um, a happy new year. I hope you all had an enjoyable uh, holiday season, good time with your uh, family uh, and friends. Um, yeah, so 2023 was was quite a year, a lot of news for NIH. Uh, perhaps the most important is that we we have a new NIH director. Uh, we're very uh, excited uh, about that. That happened um, late in the year. And then there were a number of other developments um, that occurred. Um, we are in the process of implementing the uh, simplified review framework, something that will be, that I'm sure is of great interest um, to the community. And then a number of events that came up um, at the uh, ACD, the advisory committee to the director meeting last December, and I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to talk about those. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a lot going on, and I should have wished everyone a happy new year as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so talking about, I guess, continuing that thread about like the ACD you mentioned, a lot of the discussion in the last one was on postdocs and in the workforce more more generally. We definitely talked a lot about that over the last year. I mean, we supported another record number of early stage investigators. You know, we have an interest in seeing like where postdocs might be going, and maybe even you know taking recommendations on increasing stipends and. Um, you know, and someone like myself with an interest in researchers with disabilities, we're even talking about some of that. You know, there's been a lot in the workforce, basically. Um, what do you what are your thoughts on that? How how did 2023 go on that aspect? Well, yeah, that that's exactly right. Um, certainly uh, in the world of postdoctoral training, um, a huge amount happened uh, over the past year. Um, and and I'm sure we all you know, our audience is is very much well aware of that. Uh, so we had a working group um, that was uh, convened by the advisory committee to the director. I was a member of the working group, and it was an enormous pleasure um, to uh, to work with Dr. Schwetz and Dr. Berger and uh, and all our various colleagues uh, on the working group. Um, the report is quite comprehensive. It's interesting. It's informative, uh, and uh, I think the recommendations are are quite uh, are quite striking. Uh, and uh, are definitely worthy of uh, of a lot of discussion. Um, perhaps the the most important uh, recommendation was the very first one, um, dealing with uh, increasing the stipend level for our NRSA program. Um, that is something which, as uh, Dr. Bertinelli said, is under active discussion here um, uh, at at the NIH. But I, I would really strongly encourage uh, encourage you all. Uh, to take a look at, at the very least, take a look at the presentation and take a look at the report. Um, there's a great deal in there. It's not only about postdocs and what happens with postdocs. It, it's also about um, the, the nature of how science is conducted in the lab um, in this uh, rapidly evolving environment that, that we're currently in. Well, rapidly evolving environment. Um, that kind of leads me actually perfectly to my next question. It's constantly evolving. I mean, we're... We, we ask a lot of our, of our researchers, you know, as part of our efforts to, you know, ensure accountability and stewardship in the funds that we support. And, you know, we recognize it takes a lot of time and efforts to kind of address or be responsive to some of these evolving needs that, you know, that, that researchers face. What are you, what are we, what are, how are we going to be, you know, addressing this sort of thing, especially thinking about last year and, you know, moving forward? Well, it's an interesting ongoing tension, and I think it's a tension that's been going on for, for many decades, which is, uh, on, on the one hand, um, the interest on the part of many of our constituents um, to assure uh, proper accountability and oversight, and, and on the other hand, to uh, have our process be as, as streamlined, user-friendly, um, and least bureaucratic um, as as possible. And certainly, um, you know, with the postdocs, um, there were recommendations that uh, that um, postdocs who were supported on research grants should also have um, development plans uh, and that there should be some processes in place to make sure that they are getting appropriate mentoring and, and appropriate um, uh, career development um, advice. Okay, well, th that's great, but then how how do you um, actually uh, actually do that? 
Um, I know that there's a great deal of interest in other areas um, as well, including uh, research security, uh, biosketch, other support forms, uh, various uh, misconduct re uh, related issues. Um, and so um, you know, this is something that uh, is part of an ongoing dialogue. It's an ongoing tension uh, between, um, on the one hand, assuring the you know, appropriate oversight, accountability, and stewardship, uh, and, and on the other hand, making our, our systems as, as user-friendly as, as possible. Well, on that ongoing dialogue as it related to misconduct, since you mentioned that one, you definitely had a lot of a lot of things to discuss last year in, in the misconduct space. And you know, you, you met with uh, uh, Sheila Garrity, the new director of the HHS Office of yeah. Research Integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's the new request for information on the on changes to research misconduct guidelines and regulations. You know, we had lots of work in the professional misconduct space from harassment or preventing harassment, preventing discrimination in science. You know, how do you how do you feel like things are moving forward in that space? Yeah, so there's a lot going on there. We're we're thrilled about the new um, director um, at ORI, and and yes, we we had a we had a fantastic discussion with uh, with Sheila Garrity. It was really uh, wonderful to sit down with her, and uh, uh, we continue to have a very strong working relationship with ORI. I, I meet with Sheila Garrity on, on a regular um, basis um, and our um, our staff and, and our colleagues at, at ORI are, are frequently in touch with with one another. Um, so uh, that that is of course a, an important area of development are, are the uh, the updated uh, regulations. On the professional misconduct issues, and in particular harassment and discrimination, I, I think that this is the item that's actually taking up more time than anything else right now. Um, we probably spend more time in within our research integrity and compliance group dealing with ha harassment and uh, discrimination concerns than, than any other. Um, we continue to get a very large number of allegations. And David, I recall we put out a blog last year on, on the number of different kinds of allegations that we get. Um, and uh, we're getting over 500 um, of these uh, um, uh, a year. Uh, research misconduct, classic research misconduct, falsification, fabrication, and plagiarism, um, uh, unfortunately, continue to be um, active areas um, of, uh, uh, of work. There have been some high-profile cases um, over, the past, uh, over the past year. Um, and uh, this is uh, another area where uh, you know, we're continuing to pay a lot, a lot of attention. Yeah, that, that blog you mentioned was actually a direct result of our previous conversation. Oh, okay. Like, right. yeah, that. Uh, okay. Who knows what's going to come out of, the, out of this conversation? All and, right, right. Uh, definitely, definitely some folks who haven't checked it out. Check that one out and a couple of case studies on, you know, how we're addressing harassment. Um, but, you know, on a, on a separate note, you, you mentioned uh, Dr. Bertignoli, Monica Bertignoli, the new NIH director. Um, I suspect lots of great changes are afoot for 2024 as, you know, we're working with the new NIH director. But how do you kind of envision the, the extramural research, the extramural grant policy world, uh, research world, um, kind of interacting in this wider, you know, changing NIH environment and, um, you know, maybe other, even even going wider and strengthening relationships outside of NIH with, you know, with Congress and, and our partners uh, across the academic institutions and stuff like that. You know, I, I, we did a lot in this last year and I suspect that'll be continuing. Yeah, so our goal in the Office of Extramural Research and the Office of the Director is to um, enable the director to be successful. Um, she is in the process of articulating her top goals and, and her top priorities, and we will do everything that we can um, so that she will uh, she will achieve those goals uh, and, and priorities. Um, and uh, th this will uh, almost certainly evolve, I, I anticipate fairly quickly, um, over the next uh, few months, um, as uh, as Dr. Um, Bertinelli, um, you know, can, continues this transition that that she's in the middle in right now, we are so excited. I, I have to say, she's an incredible visionary um, and, uh, and and leader, and she's um, just full of ideas. She's she's uh, we know that she's a brilliant scientist and clinician. Um, she has an interesting background. Um, she uh, grew up in uh, in rural America. Still has um, strong connections um, to rural America. Uh, she's also um, a surgeon and, and uh, was an academic surgeon for um, for for many years and uh, in in prestigious places. So we're we're really excited and um, you know I, I have every reason to be optimistic. 
And our primary role with, um, in, in the Office of Extramural Research and with grants policy and grants procedures is, is to uh, help her achieve those, those goals. All right, I need you to put your, your crystal ball in front of you. And, uh, you know, we're gonna be looking out into the future, 2024, um, you know, as it relates to what we're gonna be doing. Uh, lots, what do you project? What, what are we gonna be focusing on? I mean, there's un, the, tons of different things that we should be looking at in 2024. Where is the direction? Uh, you know, maybe the, you know, something with AI is gonna be coming up, who knows? But uh, I can just think of all sorts of different stuff. Uh, what do you anticipate for this upcoming year? So I watched this great uh, documentary, um, I don't know, a few months ago called It Ain't Over. Um, and it, it's really Story beautiful. It's a beautiful documentary about uh, about Yogi Berra uh, and about his life. Um, one of the, uh, if you haven't seen it, it, it's great. It's so inspiring. And especially if, you know, if you're having a bad news day, it would be well worth, well worth it to watch. So, um, and it points out that Yogi Berra didn't only say very wise things, which I'm about to get to, um, but but also that he uh, was um, an amazing baseball player. He was an absolutely amazing baseball player, and unfortunately, that that bit has been um, has been forgotten. Anyway, Yogi Berra is attributed to have said um, that prediction is is very difficult, especially about the future. Although I have heard that it wasn't actually Yogi Berra who said it, that it was actually <laughs> Niels Bohr. And that's, by the way, another movie, um, uh, somewhat different tone. That was the Oppenheimer film where Niels Bohr was, was a character. And Niels Bohr is also said to um, have um, stated that prediction is very difficult about the future. So I am uh, going to be very careful about making any predictions. <laughs> um, I think one prediction I can make with, with a great deal of comfort um, is that we are going to be working on uh, on um, on the uh, recommendations from the postdoc uh, working group. Um, that that I can say I can say that because we're actually doing it. Um, but but this this is something that obviously is is going to be top priority for us this year is to go through those recommendations uh, one by one, figure out you know uh, what we can do quickly, what uh, what uh, we will do um, over a somewhat longer period of time. And then figure out how the actual implementation will will take place. I I think the other thing I can predict is is that we will be hearing um, a lot from Dr. Bertinoli about about her priorities uh, and her vision, and uh, obviously very excited about that. Well, if it relates to Yogi, if you see a fork or come up to a fork in the road, take it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, right, that's right. <laughs> um, and and well, there's a lot of things that I haven't said that I post, supposedly said or something like that. <laughs> We documented everything you said, Mike, don't worry. Yeah, right. uh, um, so uh, uh, the a final question, as we take a, as we wrap this up, um, I ask this every year and, you know, I always anticipate what you're going to say as it relates to what's uh, your resolutions coming for uh, coming forward. And, you know, as, as it relates to me, I resolve to continually be an amazing person. Um, so, so far, I'm winning on that. So <laughs> what are your resolutions? Uh well I I'm I'm not waiting for that I think it's happened David I think you oh, are yeah. an amazing person and and I have to say it's an enormous pleasure to I'll work with you and so um I think I said last year that I don't do New Year's resolutions because they just generally don't work but um but if <laughs> if I'm going to have to make a New Year's resolution my New Year's resolution David is that you will continue to be an amazing person. Uh, and your I, check I, is in the mail. Your check's in the mail. <laughs> and I, I do. I, I want to also use this opportunity to appreciate, um, you know, David and his colleagues, uh, all the work that's done on the Nexus uh, and on the Open Mic blog. And we want to thank all of you um, for being so engaged and uh, for taking a look at the Nexus and the blog and the bot and the podcast and, and all the various other kinds of outreach that that we are um, engaged in. It's it is really important. Um, uh, you know, always it's really important, but especially let's say now when we're, you know, we're now uh, we're now ha we have a new director on board. It is really important that that we remain um, engaged with one another, that we have a proper dialogue, that we have a, a high quality and constructive dialogue with uh, with the extramural research community. And so we very much look forward to um, that uh, continuing and growing um, in the year ahead. Well, and and I completely echo that to the research community, those out there. You know, if you have questions, reach out to us. We're, we're always here to help answer any questions that you might have. Um, thank you very much, Mike. Um, this has been a great opportunity uh, to hear more about, you know, your your look back on 2023 and what's coming up for 2024. Um, I, I, it's it's going to be an exciting year. And I also have to 
um, give my kudos to Mr. Duran Turner. He's always in the background on all of these different things. So um, yes, many, thank thanks you, and, and many thanks uh, and, uh, and, and looking forward to seeing how 2024 goes. Thank you very much. Thank you.